Welcome to the biology video series. We're going to start today with just an introduction to the biology class with some tips that are specific to succeeding in this class. And then we're going to have future videos where we go over um, different chapters from the book and some things you need to know from them. So for today, it's just a short video um, covering some tips for starting Penn Foster's biology course. So the first thing that you need to know is this course has a textbook. So you have reading materials um, online on your student portal, but those are not the majority of what you're going to be reading. Your test questions are going to come from this textbook. So it is Miller and Levine Biology. It's got a parrot on the cover. If you uh, get the books mailed out, this is what you're going to see. If you don't get the books mailed out and you have the ebook, this is how you find it. You look at the assignments for any um, lesson section and you're going to see the readings from Penn Foster like this first one but then you'll see chapter one the science of biology or chapter anything else anyone that starts with the word chapter you click on that and that's going to give you this blue go to reading button you click on that and it'll open up your ebook now once you get into the ebook um, it should take you right to the chapter that you want, but sometimes you need to jump around. If you're um, you know, looking for things that are going to be on your test, you might need to go between chapters. So there's two ways to do that. You could either use this table of contents, which is this button um, up here that the red arrow was pointing to, and that's going to let you pick a unit and then a chapter. Um, the units aren't really something that... Um, is going to make sense with Penn Foster because we have the lessons broken up a lot differently. So you might be um, in lesson one, but you're doing unit two or something like that. So don't worry about the units. Um, you just click on a unit so that you can get to the chapters within that unit and your reading material will tell you which chapter you want. You could also just jump to a certain page. So um, the arrow on the bottom left here is pointing to a box where you can type in a page number. And if you don't see it, the arrow on the bottom right here is pointing to a tiny little tab with an arrow. If you click on that, that'll bring up the box where you can put in a specific page number. So that's how you navigate around the ebook. Again, if you're getting them mailed out, then you don't have an ebook. So here's some more tips for um, what's in your book. You don't want to ignore the charts and diagrams for any science class. A lot of information is in one place, and sometimes it's information that's not anywhere else in the text. For example, here's a diagram of cellular respiration, and it goes through all of the steps of it and what's going on. You need to look at that diagram, try to understand it, follow all the steps on it. Um, if you get a respiration question on the test, this might be where the information comes from, so you don't want to skip over it. Uh, another example would be this chart on plants where it's just a really good way to organize the information. There's a lot of nutrients that plants need and it's telling you what the nutrient is, um, what it does in the plant and what happens if the plant doesn't have it. So charts like this are just a good way to pack a lot of information into a small space. So you don't want to ignore, ignore those either. Now you don't have to memorize everything in this chart, but it's a good idea to know where it is so that you can look up that information if you need it. And one more example is occasionally you see this where you've got um, some pictures and there's captions under them and there's actually words defined in these captions. So you see it gives you the definitions for uh, population and for community. And those words aren't defined anywhere else. They're only defined right under those pictures. So my whole point is just that you can't just read the text and skip over any of the pictures and charts and diagrams. It's all really important to helping you get the whole picture. Now, another really um, kind of weird thing about this class is there's a lot of this type of question where you have to compare or contrast different concepts from your lesson. So you're going to see several questions on the test that are worded like this. Unlike thing A, thing B, and then you finish the sentence. Um, so it might say, unlike cats, birds, and you've got to figure out what the answer is out of your choices. So there's two things to, to realize. You're finishing the sentence. So thing B, dot, dot, dot. 
and you're filling in what's the dot, dot, dot. So whatever answer you pick, it has to be true about thing B because that's the sentence. Thing B does this. Um, but it also says, unlike thing A, thing B does this. So you're looking for something that is true about thing B, but it's not true about thing A. So let's look at our example. Unlike cats, birds, what? Are living things, have kittens, lay eggs, or are plants? So we are looking for the option that is something that's true about birds, because that's how we're finishing our sentence. Okay, birds, dot, 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 birds what? So something that's true about birds, um, but we're also looking for something that's not true about cats. So it's a difference between cats and birds. So you're looking for an answer not true about the second thing, but it is, or an answer that is true about the second thing, but is not true about the first thing. So the only thing that actually meets this requirement um, would be C. Okay, so A is not true because uh, they're both living things. So we can't say A because that doesn't do our job of completing the sentence, okay? Um, birds are living things. That is true, but it says unlike cats. So that means that's not gonna work because cats are living things. Okay, birds have kittens. Well, no, they do not, so B is not true. And birds have plants. Well, no, they're not. So the only one that makes sense is C because birds lay eggs and that is unlike cats. Now, if that isn't confusing enough, there's also questions like this, where they're worded where they say like thing A, thing B, blank. So for example, like broccoli, the Incredible Hulk, dot, dot, dot. So we have to figure out what is true about both of them. So again, we're thinking, okay, we're finishing the sentence. Thing B, dot, dot, dot. So what's true about thing B? And also, because it's like thing A, it has to also be true about thing A. So what's our options? Like broccoli, the Incredible Hulk is a person, is a plant, is green, or is an insect? Well, we're looking for an answer that describes both things. Okay, we're finishing the sentence for thing B. Okay, the Incredible Hulk, blank, blank, blank. Um, so it can't be B, because the Incredible Hulk is not a plant. It can't be D, the Incredible Hulk is not an insect. Um, and then how about these? Like broccoli. So something that's true about the Hulk and broccoli. Well, broccoli is not a person. The only one that's true is C. They are both green. So um, just really pay attention to your test questions. Keep an eye out for those type of questions. Things that say unlike thing A, thing B, blank. Or unlike thing, or like thing A, thing B, blank. There's also a lot of vocabulary in biology. In fact, each page of your textbook has a section with the definitions of all the new terms on the page, and it's marked Build Vocabulary. So if you have the ebook version, it's this, Build Vocabulary, and these kind of pale yellow words are the words that you need to know, and then here's the definitions. If you have the textbook version, it looks more like this. It's a box on the side of the page with a purple heading that says Build Vocabulary. So you do not want to skip over the vocabulary words. They are really important. You take note of the terms before you read, if you can, or while you're reading. Uh, make sure that you recognize those words. And then after you're reading, quiz yourself on these terms. You can go back through and quiz yourself on all of those build vocabulary words. Um, and then you have flashcards in your lesson review at the end of your Penn Foster lesson that also goes over them. Make sure you use all of the resources available for this class. Um, so you've obviously found the playlist on YouTube where we have chapters um, or lessons from each chapter in the book. We're almost finished with adding all of those. And then you've also got a few other things to pay attention to. So in your lessons, you might see this list of assignments. So you have um, chapter, this is your reading in the, oops, this is your reading in the textbook. Then you have these practice questions, uh, the Discover Mores. So practice questions are really useful because they're gonna help you see what you need to know. They're gonna make you review things that you might have read and forgotten about. Um, and these all come from the textbook. So it'll say Discover More, 
chapter 8, section 1, do questions 1, 2, and 3. So you've got to go into the textbook, go to chapter 8, and find the review at the end of section 1. Then you have your flashcards, also super important. Like I said, vocabulary is really important in this class. Key points and links I'm going to point out in a second. And then occasionally you're also going to see an extra video review at the end of your lesson. So if you see one of those, make sure to watch it. Now, key points and links is great. It's a page that kind of summarizes some really important things. If you um, read it and you're not sure what they're saying, then you need to stop. You need to figure that out. You need to ask for help if you need to before you move on. You have to understand the key points. They're the most important things from the chapter. And then links is um, links to helpful things that help you understand a little better. And I know in other classes, there's not a lot of links. Um, they might not be super helpful in every class, but in biology, um, I've gone through and added a lot of links that are um, directly related to what you're learning. So if you're having trouble with one of the concepts in the, the class, you're just not sure about how to do a certain thing or a certain topic, see if there is a video in the key points and links about it and that might be helpful. Okay, so I hope that you found these tips helpful. Um, if you have any questions though, don't hesitate to contact your instructor and continue watching the rest of the videos for help with each individual lesson.